So the summary of the FIR filter so far the story continues. So let's start with an impulse response in the time domain, the continuous time domain. So h of t is like this. That's our impulse response of a filter. Yeah, so we've got our signal x of t and this goes into a filter h of t and generates an output y of t and we know that the y of t is calculated by x of t convolved with h of t and we know that y of s is x of s multiplied by h of s in the plus domain. Okay, so what we need to do is we just sample it, this impulse response, and getting an impulse response out there n h of n, which might look like this. So we've got our sample system here. So now we have an x of n, and this goes into h of n, and this is generating y of n. And so now we know that in the sample domain we have got y of z equals x of z multiplied by h of z. And this corresponds to y of n equals x of n convolved with h of n, but in this case here in the sample space and that's a z domain here. Okay, so this can be now implemented here, this, this convolution operation here in an FIR filter. So what we have is we've got delay lines. Yeah, so these are delay steps and they are multiplied by, this is h of 0, this is multiplied by h of 1, this is multiplied by h of 2, this is multiplied by h of 3, and multiplied by h of 4, and so on. And this is all summed up and generates our output y of n and this is our input x of n. And this structure here is called FIR filter. So the FIR filter does nothing else than convoluting the input signal x of n with the impulse response h and um, generating the output y.